Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a Hong Kong Chinese action film called Project Gutenberg. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Li Man and his girlfriend Yuan live in Vancouver as painters. While Yuan creates original art, Li is more interested in replicating the paintings made by famous painters. He is very talented in his field of work and can replicate almost any kind of painting to every minute detail. However, his work is not very popular among the dealers and the gallery show organizers since they cannot display a counterfeit painting no matter how good it is. One evening, Lee returns home to hear Yuan's manager telling her that she should drop being Lee's co-artist if she wants to succeed. Yuan, in turn, asks the manager to drop her because she would never stop being Lee's partner. After a lot of struggle, the duo manages to land a spot in an art show. Their paintings are displayed for the guests to see. Many of them love Yuan's work but are critical of Lee's paintings. One guest, named The Artist, goes as far as to call his painting fake. Yuan furiously throws her drink in his face and asks him to go away. Lee follows the man to apologize and finds out all this was a setup made by the artist so that they could meet in private. He says he recognizes Lee's talent for counterfeit art and praises his precision. They go to a bar and talk over a drink. The artist claims that he also loves precise replicas and has a job for Lee if he wants to change his life. After the encounter, Lee goes back to the art gallery and burns the painting that was insulted earlier. Satisfied with the decision, he calls the artist the next day and agrees to work for him. When asked what paintings he wants to be replicated, the artist shows him a hundred dollar bill. It turns out he is planning to make bundles and bundles of fake money that is impossible to be recognized. Since they cannot just print the money, the artist is desperate to have someone like Lee on his team. Initially, Lee refuses to do anything illegal, but upon realizing that he will be swimming in money, he takes the offer. He returns home that day and sees Yuan moving away from their home. She has decided to leave him after the stunt he pulled at the gallery that cost her a lot of money. In the following scene, Lee joins the artist and his team on a private plane that is flying to Thailand. Lee still plans to return to Canada and win Yuan over after making some money. The team consists of a printing plate specialist, Mr. Yam, a color theory expert, and two people in charge of security and sales. The new 1996 US $100 bill features the Duplessis version of Franklin's portrait that is enlarged by 50%, which resulted in more details and lines. Even if they use the commercial printer with the highest resolution, the result will be of a different pattern and not precise at all. Moreover, there is a microprint on Franklin's collar on the bill that says the United States of America. A commercial printer would never be able to print with this precision. This is where Lee comes to play because he can paint the bill better than the printers. Secondly, the bills are made of scratch-free paper that turns the black ink of the counterfeit detection pen into yellow. This helps bank workers separate fake from real. The artist is yet to find a way to get the scratch papers, but until then, he wants Lee to work hard on the painting process. For the next few weeks, Lee paints the $100 bill with absolute precision, not missing a single streak or line. To embed the watermark and the security thread in the counterfeits is yet another difficulty. For this, they are going to use a Chinese painting method where the real painting is sandwiched between two papers that are pressed to make the middle layer stand out. Next comes the printing process that is under Mr. Yam. He uses his expertise to make a printing plate that paints within 10 thousandth of a millimeter precision. On a test round, they see that there is no more A effect, which means they are successful. After that, the artist discovers a way to acquire scratch paper that is the main raw material for production. They travel to Eastern Europe to a phone book manufacturing company. It turns out they use scratch paper that is triple the width of a $100 bill to manufacture phone books. The width is perfect for the sandwiching process, so they buy a huge batch of it, disguised as a Chinese comic book company. After importing the paper to their hideout, it doesn't take them long before making the counterfeits that look identical to real bills. They sell it through an antique shop to wholesalers and are very careful about the people they do business with. After six months of working with the artist, Lee returns to Vancouver to return a key to Yuan. 
He refuses to meet her and decides to leave the key on her desk. The artist thinks he's a coward for giving up so easily, which causes an argument between the two. To prove his bravery, the artist brings out a gun and goes to a police car to conduct a robbery out of nowhere. That's not bravery, that's idiocy. Lee has to reluctantly help him in it, but he cannot shoot anyone out of fear. By the end of the impromptu robbery, all the policemen are dead, and Lee is left shocked. He finally realizes his boss is not a sane person. Moreover, he only signed up to paint, not to kill people. Then, we are introduced to a counterfeit bill expert in the police named Wing. He is called to Hong Kong from Canada because the police have gotten a hint of a sudden rise in fake dollar bills all around the world. Wing meets the head of Hong Kong police, Inspector Ho. They go on an undercover mission and pose as customers who are willing to buy fake money. After several meetings with a lot of brokers, they are allowed to meet the artist at a boat party. However, their hopes to catch the culprit are crushed when they find out the painter sent his brokers in his place. Place. They test Wing in several ways and figure out that he is not a threat. One afternoon, Lee approaches the artist and claims that he doesn't want to be on the team anymore. Still, he promises to find a new way for them to keep their business going before his departure. The artist allows him to do whatever he wants without a fuss. In the following montage, we see the team traveling the world and selling their money at an international level. The profits are insane, and so is the demand for their goods. Then, they get the highest bid from the Thai crime boss, the general. He calls the artist and his team to his hideout for a business meeting. But it turns out that the general killed the artist's father long ago. Hence, the artist is here not for business, but to kill the general. He asks Lee to trigger the explosives in his jacket, but a cowardly Lee refuses. Seconds later, a car explodes and a shootout ensues. Everyone from the general's team is killed, except for their counterfeit money expert named Sarah. She is about to die after catching on fire, but is saved by Lee. After the group departs, she is taken care of and invited to the team because of her expertise. Lee takes care of her, and the two develop a friendship. Meanwhile, the artist gives her a fake ID under the name Yuan after Lee's ex-girlfriend. The team takes a one-year break from business after the incident. During this time, Lee and the artist go back to Vancouver to meet Yuan and win her over. By now, she has turned into a famous artist, selling hundreds of her paintings. However, things go downhill when they find out she is engaged to her manager. The artist wants Lee to fight for his love, but he has already given up. In the following scene, they are on a yacht on their way to a business meeting with the undercover policeman, Wing. The artist does his own research about the customer and finds out about his true identity. He also discovers the police were able to find them because the printing plane expert, Mr. Yam, broke the rules and bought a watch with counterfeit money. As they had decided, his family will now have to be killed for his mistake. Mr. Yam begs for his family's life, but the artist shoots him dead. Lee tries to retaliate, but is knocked out. After that, the team meets Wing, who is unaware that they know his true identity. Once they are in a closed room, the artist asks Lee to kill Wing, but he refuses. In the end, he has to do the job himself. To make Lee get over his fear of killing, the artist has kidnapped Yuan and her fiance. He hands Lee a gun and asks him to kill them, since it will be easier for him to kill people he hates. However, Lee refuses yet again. In a fit of rage, the artist kills Yuan's fiancé himself while Lee saves Yuan. Sarah knows that Lee will also be killed after this. She remembers that he saved her life long ago and attacks the rest of the team. In the ensuing shootout, all the members die and Lee finally kills the artist. Sarah makes him let go of Yuan and brings him to a resort that the artist had bought for them. They find out he is still alive because the police never recovered his body. One day, Lee discovers that Yuan is about to organize a memorial for her late fiancé. He suspects the artist will be there to kill her to get to him. Despite Sarah begging him not to go, he does it anyway. However, on the way, he accidentally uses the counterfeit money and is apprehended by the police. He is then taken to Hong Kong under Inspector Ho's custody and interrogated. Lee is terrified of getting killed by the artist if he reveals his identity. Hence, he keeps quiet about everything. A few days later, Yuan comes to meet him and convinces him to help the police. They settle on an agreement that Lee will be released into witness protection for revealing the artist's identity and criminal history. After that, Lee starts telling the police all about his past, starting from his relationship with Yuan, how he met the artist, the money-making process, the time he witnessed the first murder, and so on. After he reveals everything, he also helps the police make sketches of the only two remaining people from their team. 
Sarah, and the artist. By the end of the day, Lee and Yuen are left in a hotel with security outside. The police immediately start a search for the artist, now that they have a picture of him. While they are at it, Inspector Ho notices him, disguised as a police officer in the police headquarters itself. She and her team arrest him and hold him down, only to find out the man has been a policeman for several years and couldn't be the artist at all. This is especially strange because he was the one playing the role of the artist from the very beginning. It is then revealed that the policeman was the guy who helped Ho to bring Lee from Thailand to Hong Kong. Lee had seen his face on the route and remembered it. A flashback shows us that Lee and the artist are the same person. Lee created the artist in his mind to escape the reality that he is a horrible person. Every time he was fearful of the crimes the artist was committing, Lee was the one committing them. He was also the one who killed Mr. Yam and his family for buying a watch. In the last shootout that killed most of his team, he was the one who killed Yuan's fiance, and the shootout was caused due to a conflict among them. Yet another shocker comes when we realize the girl who came to bail Lee out is not Yuan, but Sarah. She was so obsessed with Lee that she got plastic surgery since her face was burnt. After the surgery, she looked identical to Yuan. She came to save her lover, and the two have already fled from the hotel room after killing the guards. In the following scene, we see the couple together in bed. Sarah is sad that she is always going to be a counterfeit Yuan and a second option for Lee. When asked if he sees her for herself, Lee doesn't try to hide that he is still in love with the real Yuan. The next day, they get on a boat and run away from Hong Kong. But on the way, Sarah reveals she has been driving in circles for hours, and they are still in Hong Kong's territory. She wants to kill him and herself and end this life of misery. They are soon surrounded by the police, but before they can catch them, the boat explodes, killing both of them in the process. In the last scene, Inspector Ho goes to the real Yuan to inform her that her fiancé's killer has died. On looking at a picture of Lee, she recognizes him as just a neighbor she had long ago. It turns out Lee even fantasized his entire relationship with Yuan, and they were never together. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.